If there's one thing that continues to perplex me about Hogwarts Legacy, it's the game's stealth system. First showcased during the State of Play gameplay reveal, the system gives players the ability to move and attack undetected. What I wanted to know, and what's sort of now confirmed, is just how deep does that system go? And the answer is not that deep. In terms of actually going stealth, players can cast the Disillusionment Charm. As far as we can tell, based on a whole bunch of recently released gameplay, there's no limit to when and how players can do this. Spells aren't tied to a specific resource, they're all based on cooldowns, and the Disillusionment Charm seems to have no cooldown. I'd imagine that going stealth during combat isn't an option. I don't know a single game that lets you do that outright, which makes complete sense, let's be real. But it really is what happens after you go stealth that kind of gets me. Much like a silent takedown in your favorite stealth game, Pick Your Poison, players can use Petrificus Totalis to eliminate an enemy. Using this spell renders the target completely immobile indefinitely, and after a short time, those enemies simply disappear from the game world. At this point, we've watched a lot of clips of players engaging with the stealth system, and one thing is abundantly clear. The AI in Hogwarts Legacy aren't exactly smart, at least not at the lower difficulties when it comes to stealth. We've seen players attack straight out of stealth, and the delay between breaking stealth and actually attacking the player back is huge. I'd argue you could cut down multiple enemies before anyone even retaliates, and while that might be intentional to a degree, it does seem like the time to engage and react is way off. This could change as players push into the harder difficulties in the game, but we'll just have to wait and see if that's true. On top of that, while in stealth, Petrificus Totalis doesn't feel entirely believable. Sure, the end result is a one-hit KO, but bodies hitting the ground isn't exactly quiet, and the detection by enemy AI is pretty pathetic. Now, to be fair, we did see in one instance a patrolling enemy spot a stealth attack and then search for the player, but that seems to be an exception to the rule, at least at this point. Detection is another system that's pretty basic. If an enemy is looking at the player and the player gets close enough, the detection goes up. If the triangle icon that indicates detection above an enemy's head fills up all the way, then your cover's blown. I don't honestly expect much more in this regard, that's just how stealth detection has worked for years and decades even at this point. I want to be fair and point out that we still have only seen a fraction of Hogwarts Legacy from a gameplay perspective, but as far as I can see it, right now, stealth is absolutely OP. There's no restriction on how many times you can use Petrificus Totalis, it's an instant cast and has an instant effect, and you don't break stealth when you use it. Now, I don't really like this, mainly because I think a lot of players can exploit this, but at the end of the day, who am I to stop them having fun in a single player game? But as someone that loves talking about video game systems, it's a topic that's really piqued my interest. What really rounds out my concerns about the stealth system is the ridiculously small talent tree that accompanies it. In all of the RPGs I've played that feature talent systems, I've never experienced one with only four upgrades, and that's exactly what we're looking at here. If you compare the stealth tree to the others, it just seems off. I would venture a guess that the few talent upgrades that are available aren't that interesting either. With such a basic system, there's not a lot of room for creativity. My guess is talents will do one or all of the following. Increase how long it takes enemies to detect the player, increase the range at which you can use Petrificus Totalis, and allow players to cast other spells while in stealth. Those are just ideas, but they seem like the most logical options. At the end of the day, stealth feels like it could have been a much more robust system. Given that magic allows for a lot of creativity, it does seem the team took the path of least resistance and innovation when designing and implementing it into the game. Now, let me be clear, that's fine, but once launch rolls around, let's just not pretend stealth in Hogwarts Legacy is something amazing or anything that it's not, because of everything I just laid out, it's very possible that stealth is a wildly overpowered yet simple system that players can exploit to make the game easier. And while that's okay, I think there was a lot more the team could have done to make the system a bit more interesting, engaging, and immersive. Like I said before, I am just fascinated by gameplay systems, which is why I wanted to talk about stealth today. As someone that's played a ton of stealth games over the years, it was interesting to see it pop up as a major system within a Harry Potter-inspired title, but it does make sense to a degree. Regardless of how stealth makes me or you feel, Legacy Gaming will absolutely be checking out Hogwarts Legacy on February 10th, and if you're interested in following along with our adventures, we'd love to have you along for the ride. Drop a like below and consider subscribing so you never miss a new video. Although Hogwarts Legacy is a single-player game, we still want to invite you to join our growing community on Discord. We recently revamped the entire server with a special section just for Hogwarts Legacy, so check out the link below. Enjoy today!
My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.